Good morning, modern steaders. It's warmed up a bit over the days. It's 23 degrees out this morning, and we got a new project on the horizon today, guys. We're not going to be working in the workshop. <laughs> it's a little bittersweet. We'll get onto that in a little bit, but one of the reasons we bought the homestead is because of this, and now we're it didn't work out, so we have to change it up a little bit to make the homestead more productive. When we get up to doing it, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But first, we need to check on all, on all the animals, feed them, and give them some nice warm water for the morning. You guys are gonna hang out in the milking room this morning. You never come in here, Pluto. You're hoping I drop some grain, Pluto, aren't you? That's why you're in here this morning. It's a nice, be it's a nice beautiful morning and the boys aren't even out yet. What are you doing, boys? Huh? The three amigos, what are you up to? You guys are liking the warmer weather this morning, huh? Oh, I can't wait till we can start using that coop. Get some baby chicks in there and, oh, can't wait, guys. Good morning, ladies. Oh, they're taking off without me. They're hungry this morning, I guess transition period on the homestead between the middle of February to March right, like end of March it's one of the hardest times for me anyways we kind of get stuck in this cold snowy weather and I know spring's coming and there's so much we want to do but we really can't get outside yet and do too much no you gotta wait down there there you go I know it gets a little frustrating some days when it's not nicer out good morning there you go. We have such a short growing season that I'm always like, what's that word I'm looking for? I don't know. But I'm always like itching and ready to go because I know we got a short growing season. So it's like, can we start yet? Can we start yet? And then all the baby animals are coming. So it's an exciting, busy time on the homestead. <sighs> and we're getting into that time like right now. And one of the projects, the project we're starting today is to get us over that hump. So when the nice weather comes, we can start going. The water did not freeze last night. I like it. That's a good sign. Oh, I need to fix our door opener. Good morning, girls. We'll get this fixed up tomorrow for you. Where are you, Moose? Huh? You letting the ladies come out first again? You being a gentleman? Oh! What's the matter? You didn't want Moose coming out? You locked him in? Coming out, Moose? <laughs> there you are. I thought I was going to come check on you. You were taking so long. Maverick Goose? You're noisy this morning. Moose? Today's project, we're gonna need the mule for it. We're also gonna need our chainsaw. We're gonna leave the self-sharpening chain on there. I'm still not 100% sold on this chain yet, but we're gonna leave it and see how it works for us today. We need our air protection. The chain's definitely a little loose. So let's tighten that up.
don't like the way that chain sounds, but we'll try it for a little bit. If we have to, we'll swap out chains and bars. Might as well bring it up with me. Let's grab our chaps, we'll need them. Get the mule loaded up. Over here behind me, we have an old growth apple orchard. Before we had all of this land behind us logged, these were actually growing in a thicket of pine trees. So they're super tall and they're just very limby and they're stretched out all over the place. And they've just gone wild, even over here. When we first bought this property, we were really excited about all these old heritage apple trees. We we're like, oh, we're gonna bring them back. We're gonna get so many apples out of them. And we've learned over the last four or five years that they do produce but they're all very wild apples they don't have any good flavor we can't use them for anything other than for feeding our animals so it's been a two-year struggle now deciding what to do here we've decided to cut down this apple orchard we're gonna have a four stage process here we got some really awesome productive things we're gonna be doing here I'm not gonna share it all with you right now but we need to take down all of these apple trees behind us the ones over here and where I'm standing right here we're gonna be redoing an apple orchard so all the trees that we get that we cut down we're gonna be getting replaced with more apple trees but over here behind me <laughs> probably about a month you'll see what's going on I don't want to give it away now so but we need to clean this up take them down and it's gonna get it's really gonna be productive we'll talk about it as we're working too but if you see I mean all the branches are really low you can't get in here and mow. You can't reclaim any of the land. We've ran the pigs and the chickens through here and that's about all we can do. And it being really close to the house, we can do a lot of productive things with this. The apple orchard we have planned for here is gonna be really nice. And the other plans that we have going on for back here, I think you guys are gonna be really excited about. We haven't had the chainsaw run in a little while, so let's Check everything over, get it running, and then we'll get set up. barn chain oil that wind is a bit brisk let's put the chaps on first that's a good idea we brought them out we have them Let's wear them. There you go. This one's gotta be hard because you don't want to land on the coop. Push it over. 
over. Nope. I was close. Don't worry, Rusty, we saved you. The deep snow makes it a little bit harder, but hopefully we'll be able to get in here soon and do what we're starting on our project. That's why we're trying to start this early, get it done. The wind is a little bit crisper than I thought it was gonna be today. We'll get this one cut down, and then we'll start dragging this stuff out, and then we can stop back there, and I'm hoping by dragging this out, we'll flatten out some of that snow. <laughs> We did good, we didn't take out the greenhouse. I know it's a shame that we gotta cut down these apple trees, but they're old and the biggest thing is, is when we bought this property, nobody been living in it for a year or two and before that, I mean, that what we learned about the property when we had it logged was that was 40 years ago, it used to be a hay field. So back when that was a hay field, I'm sure these apple trees are awesome, but then all the big pines grew up in it and they just, I mean, these trees just went nuts. I mean, that's their survival mode is just to grow, which is awesome. But now trying to make this a productive homestead, this right here, we'll be able to get so much more out of this small spot once we have it cleared. You'll see what we're doing back there. It's gonna be awesome. And then all these trees that we just cut down will get replaced with new breeds of apple trees. We'll get dwarf apples. This is the part that it's got to take a while. It's cleaning up the mess. Cutting everything down is the easy part. Ugh. We haven't used the mule like this before, so let's see how she does. burn pile going down here can't use all the branches for smoking so we are gonna have to burn some but then we'll have some good wood ash to put in our compost pile or just to spread out over the pasture so it's a win-win all the way around everything's gonna be getting used up here so One batch down. That pile's gonna get pretty big by the time we're done. Now we're not 100% finalized on that back project, so I can't give it all away yet, but it's gonna be a game changer. I feel management is a big key to 
farming, homesteading. So like this right here, cutting down apple trees seems counterproductive, productive, productive. But in the long run, it's, it's what we need to do for the homestead. I remember I went to an agricultural high school and we cut down a huge orchard one year in school. And I was like, man, why are we doing that? But the orchard had passed it's, I don't want to say life expectancy, but what it could produce. So we had to cut down the old orchard to put in a new orchard. And it's so true, you hate to have to do that sometimes, but when you're working with a small area, you got to make sure it's productive. There you go. Another thing is when we're burning all this apple wood, we're gonna have leftover charcoal. And that charcoal is gonna be really good for the pigs. You feed that to the pigs and they'll eat it. And it helps them with their diet. It helps them with parasites. The old time farmers used to feed that to their pigs all the time. Another pile down. <laughs> what are you girls doing, huh? See where all the commotion is? I bet you are. It's chilly. The soil and the dust are trailing behind my boots. Blown by the wind, show me a piece of my past. The soil and the dust. This project is one of the reasons, this project is the reason why we had to get the new chicken coop done sooner than later. It'll all make sense in hopefully less than a month. A lot of it depends on the weather and when the snow decides to melt. Instead of just burning all everything, we're also going to add to our brush pile over here, which is a habitat for small animals like rabbits and squirrels and whatever else would love to come live here. So when we were clearing up last year, I made a brush pile. So we're gonna make it a little bit bigger since it's settled down this past, this winter with all the snow. So the critters will go in here, squirrels, rabbits, mice, chipmunks, all the little ground animals will go in there and live in there and make nests in there. They'll give them a nice habitat. So the other thing I will say is over here gets full sun. There's a lot of shadows right there, but that's all from those trees. This area gets full sunlight and it's one of the flatter areas we have on the homestead. One of the nicest places we have with soil. So that's one of the big reasons we chose this spot. And then a lot of these trees are just all unhealthy. Dead wood, dead, dead, dead branches. There's a lot of fungus in them. Same with that one, that one, that one, and that one. It's taken me most of my time 
to get all the brush down below and stack. So we're gonna have a change of plans for these next couple of trees and see if that helps. This deep snow is not making it easy by no means. I'm liking this new self-sharpening chainsaw blade. So far it's been working really well. I didn't know how it was going to be after using it for a while, but I'm liking it. What a difference a half a day can make. Look at all that, oh, look at all that sunlight coming in over there now. <laughs> Guys, it's gonna look so good once it's all done. It's one of those things that always looks worse before it gets better. It's not looking pretty right now. It's a real shame to have to cut down the apple trees, but it's gonna make it so much more productive over here by doing this. Oh, it comes springtime, guys. It's gonna be jamming. Instead of doing baked sweet potatoes, today, I'm going to try to peel them and then boil them. I've never done it that way before, and just do it like um, a mashed um, sweet potato. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of maple syrup in there, some butter after, and whip it up. Maybe I'll try to use my immersion blender. I thought the peel would come off a little harder than that, but so far they're feeling good. We are loving asparagus and they're on sale. I know it's probably not the right time of year, but get what we can for vegetables, for veggies. And they're really easy. Just take them and snack them. That sun feels so glorious. The chickens are saying we're waiting for our grublies. We want our good snack. The lady's gonna eat your grain and you're waiting for the grublies, huh?
think you should try some today. No? Not today. When? Tomorrow? Um, maybe. They're loving them. Is that a good winter treat or what? How many eggs do you think? I'm gonna say 12. Oh, we got a chicken. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. I was right. Ten. Woohoo! I lost Thank track. you, ladies. I lost half of where I was because I was looking at them. Oh. And I counted there, so I counted them. You ladies are liking the grublies and the longer days I take it? Thank you. Look at that icicle. I can't take it off. Uh, Tanner almost jumped up and touched it. Tanner, I just brought that stick down here and put it in the brush pile. You're not supposed to take it out. Oh, man. Where is it? There it is. What are you boys up to, eh? That some good stuff? Look at you, mister. It's the one on the edge? It's not. Oh. But I tried to grab two and they were shorter than this, but they both broke, like they fell on the ground. Don't poke yourself. Nope. Tanner's gonna bite that ass. No! <laughs> you get it after, okay, Tanner? He wants it now. What are you doing, Hope? Let's go to the feeder. Does that sun feel good or what, girls? Yeah. Come on. It broke? Uh-oh. You broke it. Go ahead, hey. Tell the feeder. You can't come back already. Go ahead. Get out there. You only ate hay out of half the feeder. What's going on? Huh? Let's, ooh, uh, ooh. Let's swap up to some of the hay because there's two different bales in here. I think for some reason you don't like one of them, so we'll mix them together for you. Because you weren't making a mess with the hay until this last. Now all Tanner hey, can have is this. <laughs> I broke oh. the other one with hit, by hitting this one to the other one. It's going to be sad. Okay. He likes small ones anyways. Willow says she wanted a lick of your uh, icicle. Nah. What are you doing, little pay? Huh? What are you doing? You want to come up and say hello? Silly girl. Willow. Hope. Blossom, buttercup. Look at your baby bump there, buttercup. It's getting pretty big. Yeah, I definitely think buttercup's pregnant too. I think so too. I don't think Blossom is though. I'll have to figure out her due date. Mm -hmm. I don't think Blossom is though. <laughs> Hope. Wait. Done. Don't give up this rest for your weary soul. And time to heal yet still you fight with what you're doing. 
the sweet potatoes done up the way Gina did them. They taste like a buttercup squash. They are delicious. And it looked by looked like by the preparation of them, that's a lot easier to prepare than buttercup squash. So I think we're gonna have to figure out a way to grow sweet potatoes up here in our northern climate. Well, it's definitely bittersweet to have to cut down those apple trees, but what is gonna be the outcome from cleaning up that area? It's gonna be so amazing, guys. I'm so excited. We're so excited and looking forward to it. We're gonna redo a small little orchard up front. So all the trees that we cut down today, they'll be replaced anyways. So it's not like we're just taking trees down for no reason, but then also where the trees were, it's gonna be so much more productive. Can't wait to share that with you guys, but I wanna wait a little bit longer, but not completely finalized yet. And it's gonna be a little while before we start. So hold up, hold in there with us and you guys will, you'll see what it is pretty soon. And I hope you love it just as much as we do. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead and we'll see you right back here in the next video.